Blessed are the pure in spirit. They are the only ones that are going to see the kingdom of heaven. The time of grace is running out. The end of the age is at hand. Do you have a pure heart? Do you have faith for a pure heart? Let God purge, cleanse, and purify your heart. That's the only way to be saved through the born-again experience of grace and the Spirit of God. Check out this video. So the first thing we recognize about the Beatitude is it speaks of a reality that exists in the heart. Blessed are the pure in heart. And that reality is explained by God. It's explained by the grace of God. All right, second point. The blessed ones then, who are being described in verse 8, the blessed ones know this purity of heart. They have it. They're characterized by it. It belongs to them. Blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. And when you stop and think about it, this is a profound assertion. That right now on the earth, there is a people who know purity of heart. Blessed are the pure in heart. Right now on the earth, there is a people who know purity of heart. Blessed are the pure in heart. Right now on the earth, there is a people who know purity of heart. Blessed are the pure in heart. That right now, I mean before glorification, right now, living life on this planet at this moment are people who can be described by this beatitude, who are characterized by this quality, they are pure in heart. They are pure in heart. And in fact, these will be the people who see God. These will be the people who see God. These will be the people who see God. That deserves explanation, doesn't it? What does it mean that right now the people of God are pure in heart? Well, I've hinted at this, but let me underscore it. What, it, what this means is, first, you, experientially, you've, you've experienced the new birth. You've experienced the new birth. The Lord has made you a new people. In that sense, He has purified your heart. There's a cleansing that has occurred in the realm of your heart. He has purified you. What that means is that who you were in your lost condition is no longer who you are. Who you were in your lost condition is no longer who you are. So what could have been said about you in your lostness, God has removed that. You are not spiritually blind. You are not a spiritual slave. You are not held captive by inborn ignorance. You are not haters of God anymore. It, it can no longer be said of you. Remember Jesus says, why do you not receive my words? Because you can't. Because you can't. Before the Lord saved you, you could not submit yourself to God's words. You couldn't hear them. You didn't receive them. You didn't obey them. You didn't love him. You didn't love his people. All of that, God has taken away. God has removed it. He has not just forgiven you. He has not just granted you, imputed to your spiritual account, His own righteousness, but He has also transformed you. He has changed your life at the heart level. He has changed your life at the heart level. You have spiritual eyes. You have spiritual ears. You have spiritual desires. The New Testament describes it in the terms of circumcision. I mean, so, so real is this and so profound. 
we could say it this way, God has circumcised your heart. He has taken away your condition in the flesh. And he has brought you into a realm that can be described by in the spirit. You still battle with the flesh until glorification, but you're no longer in the flesh. You have a new spiritual condition. Colossians 2.11 says, In him also you were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Romans 2.29 says, But a Jew is one inwardly, and circumcision is a matter of the heart by the Spirit. Who did this circumcision on you? The Spirit of God. He's the one who changed you. By the Spirit, not by the letter. His praise is not from man, but from God. I mean, this revolutionized your ambitions in the spiritual realm. What you now live for is not man's approval, but God's approval. That you would be pleasing to the Lord. Deuteronomy 30 verse 6 says, And the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your offspring so that you will love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul that you may live. Love for God. And all that belongs to that love is what we've been given. Desire for obedience, love for truth, conviction, confession of sin, desire for prayer, desire for holiness, love for the church. You are not spiritually blind. You are not a spiritual slave. The physical act of circumcision, Old Testament, Old Covenant, symbolized man's need for cleansing of the heart. It was the outward sign of that cleansing of sin that comes by faith in God. At salvation, believers undergo a spiritual circumcision by putting off the sins of the flesh. This is the new birth, the new creation in conversion, the outward affirmation of the already accomplished inner transformation is now the believer's baptism by water. And this is what baptism pictures as someone is being baptized, that the old man is gone and a new man stands in his place. The old life was buried together with Christ and now new life has come in his resurrection. Who are these people being described in verse 8? People who are pure in heart. In what sense are they pure in heart? Their hearts have been cleansed by faith, transformed by the Spirit of God. The old condition is gone. A new condition has come. And the result of that is that now these people go on pursuing that kind of purity, pursuing having cleansed our hearts, that kind of purity. Now we have hearts that desire inward purity. In other words, what God began when he saved us continues, pursuing that kind of purity. We will be a people who experientially pursue purity of heart, purity at the heart level pursuing that kind of purity. Now, now some people have debated what this means when you talk about the experience of it, the application of it in our everyday lives. Some say, well, I think it refers to sincerity. Chiefly what he has in mind here is sincerity. Others say, no, it's talking about inward holiness. Others say, no, it's talking about inward integrity, singleness of heart in devotion to God. Well, the answer is yes, it's all of that. It's not one of those things. The reason why that you have those camps is because the Bible speaks of each of those things. Psalm 24, verse 1, the, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein, for he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to what is false and does not swear deceitfully. There's sincerity. Someone who is real and genuine in their love for God. Psalm 51, David's cry, verse 9, Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. What's he asking for? Inward holiness. Inward holiness. That the old man is gone and a new man stands in his place. Inward holiness. You are not spiritually blind. You are not a spiritual slave. Inward 
holiness. He has also transformed you. Transformed you. Inward holiness. He has changed your life at the heart level. Inward holiness. He has taken away your condition in the flesh. And he has brought you into a realm that can be described by in the spirit. Who are these people being described in verse 8? People who are pure in heart. In what sense are they pure in heart? Their hearts have been cleansed by faith, transformed by the Spirit of God. The old condition is gone. A new condition has come. Transformed by the Spirit of God that the old man is gone and a new man stands in his place. The old condition is gone. A new condition has come. These people go on pursuing that kind of purity. Having cleansed our hearts, now we have hearts that desire inward purity. Now we have hearts that desire inward purity. We will be a people who experientially pursue purity of heart, purity at the heart level. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. That the old man is gone and a new man stands in his place. Transformed by the Spirit of God, Create in me a clean heart, O God. You are not spiritually blind. You are not a spiritual slave. Create in me a clean heart, O God.